Hello, friends. Uh, glad to be back with you. Uh, let's see who's, uh, who's joined us so far. I'd like to wait a little bit so that we have, uh, we have a complete gathering here. I don't mean like 8, million, eight billion people, but uh, a, a gathering uh, be, that, can feel, we, that we can feel each other and that we have the, the resources in our connection to begin doing this beautiful relationship with the Zohar. So, let's see. We have uh, Maria from Hungary. We got Carl from Pittsburgh. And Dee is saying, good morning, dear friends. It's not morning here, so I guess it's like... Mm, it's westward from where I am, which is uh, Toronto. Uh, to be conscious is saying hi from Denmark. Uh, GB is saying hello from New Jersey. Cosmic Wizard, as opposed to Earthbound Wizard, wizard from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, Monica is saying hi from the UK. We have Carlito from South Africa, Sylvie from the Netherlands, uh, Larissa from London, uh, Dewey from Alabama. I love that name, Dewey. Um, Iggy from California. I love that name, <laughs> too. Um, Patricia, blessings from Ohio. Uh, Yetze from Netherlands, uh, Sonia from Norway, Abby says Shalom, uh, Rachel is saying hello, beautiful friends and teachers from USA South, uh, DJ, hi DJ, and thank you, uh, Nadia Good afternoon from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Ellie Lynn from Min, Min, from Min. Hmm. I can't remember what that what that acronym is. It's a state, right? Uh, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, from Bavaria, we have Jodgras, uh, German. Okay, from, yes, the Bavarian forest. Uh, Ada from Israel. We got South Carolina. Brenda from New York. Martin. Okay, I think we're feeling it, huh? Uh, Cosmic Wizard is Minnesota. Uh, Eva is from Woodstock, Ontario. Makes you a neighbor. I see you is from Saudi Arabia. I feel you. I see you. Okay. Um, so, the reading of the Zohar, and I say this each time, and by way of, of preparation, there's a few things that, that we need to do uh, before we, we join together and, and we listen. Um, This joining together and and the the way that we are we expose our hearts to what's written in the Zohar, this is a it's a prayer. 
You know, we're saying we're reading this for world peace, but it amounts to a, to a kind uh, of a prayer. <laughs> but the it's an interesting one because it's done by the upper one, really on our behalf. And all we need to do is to is to create is to connect to it. Uh, the words of the Zohar embody the the law, the spiritual law, the law of nature, the law of God, the the means by which we are constructed, the purpose for which we exist, uh, and it explains source, the, the the way in which to to connect with this, and the and the promised fulfillment, or the answer to the prayer. Um, and it's a very special time in which we do feel that we we want to do a very different kind of a prayer, not just a prayer to say, end, end the suffering of my suffering, certainly not just to end my suffering, not just to end the suffering of those that I'm, I'm, I'm worried for and that my heart hurts for, but of course we want that to happen. But it's not the suffering per se that we are, that we are praying about, or, or even to see that occur, but what we want is to end the direction that we have been in our relationship with each other that has caused this suffering. Uh, we want to change that direction and we, we want to receive, we're asking to receive the faith and the courage to take that war from the apparent external into the place where it actually exists, which is in our heart, in our uh, blindness to the fact that we are completely and totally connected, and and to our blindness as to the effect that our wanting to stay disconnected is contributing to this to this war. The war that has to happen is against the inclination that we have against seeing the complete connection and our complete incorporation into that. Uh, we want to align with that law, the upper law, uh, and we're asking for the nature of the way that we relate, see, feel, and perceive to change. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself is uh, it is the guiding principle and it's an impossibility at least to the mind it's an impossibility to the ego it seems to be an impossibility but when we immerse ourselves in the the words and thoughts that are in the Zohar they're of a completely opposite nature to the to the thoughts uh, that we have. They're very difficult for us to grasp, but we can feel them. Not on our own, but they can be felt through the connection that we have in the desire that each of us who are here right now have to feel this. To feel the connection and to be, and to be given the strength to make the connection by being exposed to an expression of this spiritual law that can be felt when we join together in the reading of the Zohar. Now, also by way of preparation, I want to read you something from the Zohar before we really start to do anything. And it's about the language, truly, of the Zohar, which we need to be reminded of over and over again, because we all have social conditioning, religious uh, conditioning, either for or against, it doesn't matter, but, but we tend to see things in their material meaning. Uh, we, we put the limitations on, on the connectedness. We, we think that other people's definitions of the divine, of God, of, you know, of this upper law, uh, we think others are limited in, in their perception of it, and they think it's like an old man or in the clouds, and, 
and it's this, or, or we will hear a word and it will spark some kind of a, of a religious fear, or all of this is just concealment of the heart. It has, it's not uh, something that belongs to others, it belongs, this is a problem that we have in our heart. The Zohar is filled with language like this that will constantly push us, test us. It will open at times like a beautiful, uh, beyond poetry, it's like the language of the upper worlds. Sometimes it opens like a beautiful flower and sometimes it will, a certain word or phrase will repel us because of the kind of conditioning and the, and that we have received and our own um, the covering over our heart and the covering over the light that is necessary for our development. So we have to understand this language and to the only way to overcome uh, the being repelled by it or confused by it is to strengthen your awareness of the connection with other people. So I will, while we're doing it, I'll read you this first without any kind of, uh, of an explanation here. There's an allegory about a man who loved his friend. He told him, certainly because of the sublime love that I have for you, I wish to dwell with you. This, by the way, is from the Zohar. His, fr his friend replied, how will I know that you will dwell with me? He went and took all the good things in his home, and he brought them to him and said, my, my pawn is with you, so I will never part from you. My pawn means my security. I'm giving something as a security. So is the Creator. He wished to dwell with Israel. He took his treasure, divinity, and he lowered it down to Israel, and Israel meaning your desire to have a direct connection with the Creator. He took divinity and he lowered it down to Israel and he told them, Israel, here is my security with you, so I will never part from you. And although the Creator was removed from us, he left the security in our hands because divinity is with us in exile and we keep his treasure. And when he asks for his security, he will come to dwell with us. This is why it is written, and I will set my tabernacle among you. I will give you a security so that I will dwell with you. And even though Israel is in exile now, the Creator's mortgage is with them, and they have never left it. How beloved are Israel by the Creator! The Creator wishes to reprove them and to lead them in the straight path as a father has mercy on his son. And out of his love for him, his cane is always in his hand to lead him in the straight path and so that he will not stray to the right or the left as it is written, for whom the Lord loves he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. And the one whom the Creator does not love he loathes, he removes him, his reproach from him removes the scepter from him. So, it's beautiful language, but it's very difficult language. And now I want to, before we start reading, I want to play you something that I tried to play you last time, but we had a technical problem. And this is about a reminder about the nature of the language of the Zohar. Good afternoon, everyone. Really happy to see you. If there's one thing I love, it's a packed lecture hall. So you all understand me, right? Speaking in English, everybody here speaks English. The Zohar is written in Aramaic. Aramaic was the language spoken in the Middle East about 2,000 years ago. If I talk to you in Aramaic or if I read the book in Aramaic, we're not going to understand. But English you're going to get, right? Right? Okay. I'm going to open this book. I'm going to translate something in English. Let's get inside. Further, he descended and struck the line. Initially, when this river rolled its waters down, Israel was in a state of perfection. 
for they offered up gifts and sacrifices to atone for their sins and to save their souls. Then the image of a lion would descend from above, and they would see it on the altar as it trampled the bodies of the sacrifices, devouring them all, and all the dogs would fall to silence. Get it? Good. Language is a system of symbols that point to concepts, arranging them in patterns that communicate meaning. Great, but what's meaning? For us, sensation is meaning. At our core, sensation is the only thing we get or don't get about what we read. The words of every language on earth are about sensations that come from relating to objects. Even our words for emotions are only about things. If you're hungry, it's not just hungry. You're hungry for a salad. You're hungry for something. There's always a thing associated with that feeling. But what if you're expressing sensations that come from relating to forces that manage this world? Forces that aren't things, but influences you can't see, because by definition, an influence is above or beyond the things that it influences. And what if you're writing a book? Because what you want to do is make it possible for people in this world to enter those sensations to enter those forces that can't be described by thing words. The only way to cross that dimension is to use words that you can relate to. Use words from this world, but use them and work backwards up to the world of those influences. This is what the Kabbalists did when they wrote the Zohar. They created a cross-dimensional language called the language of branches. So the world we live in is the world of outcomes. Everything we see, everything that happens here, is the result of what already happened here. Down here is time, space, and our world. People, places, things, the objects and events of this world. It includes your feelings, it includes your thoughts. This is the outside of existence, the branch level of reality. These are the forces that manage the objects. This is the inside of existence, the causal, the root level of reality. There's nothing on the branch level that isn't the direct result of an upper force. It's said there's not a blade of grass that doesn't have an angel above it that strikes it and tells it to grow. These forces, they're expressions of a single giving field of intention that never changes. And this type of intention is the only thing that can create. The branch has no power in itself. It's all just raw material. It's like the wax after the imprint of a seal. The only thing it can be is what the seal imprinted into it. Boom, it's too late, it can't change anything. The raw material, it's the will to receive. It doesn't have its own existence. It only exists as a result of the upper force. So, the only way to change anything is to rise to the root level. But, until I start sensing the fixed upper intention, I can't escape this world. In the Zohar, names of people, David, Sarah, Pharaoh, places, the temple, a field, things, a sin, a chariot, a lion, an angel. They're all interstates of a person, advancing from the branch to the root level. I know, we get freaked out, we get confused by our religious conditioning. It's, it's hard not to respond this way, but you've got to unlearn that response. It's like, it's like a manual on quantum physics, but we're using emotional rather than technical language because that's how we're going to connect to the upper forces with sensation, with desire, not with the mind. Okay? You descended and struck the lion. The state of Bina, the force of giving, the upper creative. Initially, when this river rolled its waters down, reaction of the root level. Israel was in a state of perfection. Your desire to be connected to the upper force is able to make the connection. For they offered up gifts and sacrifices to atone for their sins and to save their souls. When you have a sincere need to rise above a part of your inner animal egoism, then the image of a lion would descend from above and they would see it on the altar as it trampled the bodies of the sacrifices, devouring them all. Only because you want to draw closer to the upper force, to give to it rather than doing it for yourself. And all the dogs would fall to silence. And this happens despite the doubts your ego gives you. Learning this language is the same thing as rising to the upper world. By becoming inwardly like these sensations, it makes us able to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because tomorrow is what we intended. Okay, that's it for today. Remember, you don't have to study, but you do have to learn. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to um, 
rise to that uh, to the root level of the this opposite quality um, from which the Zohar is written, the spiritual quality, which is the uh, the desire to bestow the quality of the Creator. And we're, we're doing that by connecting to each other. So, let's get started. This is when you mount the candles. Happy are Israel, for the Creator desired them and gave them the true law, the tree of life, by which man inherits life in this world and in the life of the next world. Anyone who delves in the Torah and clings to it has life, and anyone who leaves the words of Torah and becomes separated from the Torah it is as though he has parted with life because she is life and all her words are life. Torah is the law. It's the upper law. 5. Happy are Israel, for the Creator gave them the Holy Torah and taught them His ways so as to adhere to Him, to keep the commandments of the Torah and to be rewarded with the next world. He brought them near when they came out of Egypt for then he brought them out of the other authority and raised them to unite in his name. Then the children of Israel were called free from everything, for they did not sit under another authority, and he raised them to unite in his name, which is above everything and which governs upper and lower. How pleasant are the words of the Torah, for in each and every word are sublime secrets, and the whole Torah is called superior. Happy are Israel, for they are given the superior law, the law of truth. And one who says that the story in the Torah, in Hebrew, Torah means law, points only to that story. Damned be he, for if this is so, then the Torah is not the superior Torah, the law of truth. Certainly the holy superior Torah is a true law. When the deepest of all, the upper Abba, shines, he shines in the river, in upper Ima, and the river stretches directly through the middle line, Zeranpin, to water everything, all the degrees in Malchut. It is written about that time when you mount since everything stems from the deepest of all. When you mount means that it comes from the upper one, the deepest of all, called thought, which is Abba. And all is one thing. At that time the assembly of Israel is blessed, and the blessings are in all the worlds. Woe unto one who says that the Torah comes to tell literal tales, and the uneducated words such as Esau and Lavan. If this is so, even today we can turn the worlds of an uneducated person. Into a law. And even nicer than theirs. And if the Torah indicates to mundane matters, then even the rulers of the world have among them better things. So let us follow them and turn them into a law in the same way. However, all the words of the Torah have the uppermost meaning. The Torah created the angels and all the worlds, and they exist for it. Moreover, when it came down to this world, the world could not tolerate it if it had not been clothed in these mundane clothes, which are the tales and the words of the uneducated. Hence, this story in the Torah is a clothing of the Torah, and one who considers this clothing as the actual Torah has nothing else, Dan will be his spirit and he will have no share in the next world. This is the reason why David said, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. That is, gaze upon what lies beneath the clothing of the Torah. 
there is an openly visible clothing, and when fools see a person dressed handsomely, those dresses seem elegant. They look no further and judge him by his elegant clothes. They regard the clothes as the man's body, and regard the man's body as his soul. Such is the Torah. It has a body which is the mitzvot of the Torah, the commandments, which are called the bodies of the Torah. This body clothes in dresses which are mundane stories, and the fools in the world consider only that clothing which is the story of the Torah. They do not know more and do not consider what exists underneath that clothing. Those who know more do not consider the clothing, but the body under the clothing. Woe unto the wicked ones who say that the Torah is nothing more than fables and consider only the clothing. Happy are the righteous who consider the Torah as they should. As wine sits only in a jar, the Torah dwells only in that clothing. Hence one needs to regard what is found under the clothing, which is why all these tales are dresses. And the wise shall, si shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, are the authors of the Kabbalah. They are the ones who exert in this brightness, called the Book of Zohar. Every son that is born you shall cast into the river. The Torah is called a son. The newborn is attained into the river, into a law. Oops. Into a river means the light of Torah. Cast is like you will study it. Meaning it's an anagram. Where you study each insight that is born in you by the light of the Torah and by its soul. This is the light of the book of Zohar and it is all because of you. This is a, a, another section called Send. Oh, how should people regard the work of the Creator? How they should regard the words of Torah? Anyone who engages in Torah seemingly sacrifices all the sacrifices before the Creator. Moreover, the Creator atones for all his iniquities, and several thrones are established for him in the next world. Friends, forget your mind, use your heart, let it pour down, think about the connection to the others, and that thing at the bottom of your heart that you want most. Let's do battle with our will to receive here. Forget about ourselves and think only of the others that are here with us. The Creator praises in the Torah and says, Go in my way and engage in my work, and I will bring you to good worlds, to upper worlds. Those who are faithful rejoice in words, and the words are blessed within them. They observe that they are one root and one core, and there's no separation in them. Those who are not faithful and do not study Torah Lishma for her sake, Make the faith Malchut separated from Zeranpin, since they blemish the Zivug, the coitus, the coupling of Zeranpin and Malchut, who are written Torah and oral Torah because they do not believe that they are one core and one root. If the Lord desires us, then He will give it to us. This is what the faithful say. When one exerts for the Creator with the desire of the heart, he will be rewarded with her because all he wants of him is the heart. He will be kept by the holy impression which is the holy covenant. We must not rebel against the Torah because the Torah does not require wealth or vessels of silver and gold. 
If a broken body engages in the Torah, it will find healing for everything. As it is written, it shall be healing to your navel and marrow to your bones. It is written, and wealth to all their flesh. All the slanderers over a person turn into his helpers and declare, make way for so-and-so, the king's servant. That is, let no one stop him from coming to the king to serve him. Happy are those who engage in Torah, Lishma, for her sake, because they truly connect to the Creator. They're called brothers and friends, as it is written, for the sake of my brothers and friends, I will now say, peace be with you. Israel are happier than all the nations in the world, for the Creator wanted them, called His name by them, and was glorified in them, for the world was created only for Israel so that they may engage in Torah. It is so because one connects to one, Zeranpan and Malchut and Israel below. In this world are his existence whereby their good the good deed whereby their good deeds they raise man for a coupling, for a zivug. Man is a prayer. And they are the existence of all the other nations mm. who exist because of Israel, who do their master's will. When the Creator created the man in the world, He established him such as above, and placed His power and might in the midst of His body, where there is heart, the strength of the whole body, and from which the whole body is nourished. The heart grips and strengthens in a high place. In the brain, that is in the head above, and one connects to the other. In this manner the Creator established the world. He made it one body, and established the organs of the body around the heart, and the heart is inside of the whole body. And all of the organs are nourished by the heart, who is the strength of all and on whom everything depends, and the heart connects and unites with the upper brain that is above. Let's see if there's anything that you friends want or need. Okay, I'll continue then. A lovely hind and a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you at all times. With, with her love be you ravaged always. Torah. Torah, the light of all the worlds, several seas and streams, origins and springs spread out from you to all sides. From you is everything. On you stand upper and lower. The upper light comes forth from you. Torah, Torah, what shall I tell you? A lovely hind are you, you are, and a graceful doe. Above and below are your lovers, who will be rewarded with nursing from you properly. Torah, Torah, the enjoyments of your master, who can reveal and tell your secrets and concealments. If you were not Rabbi Shimon, I would not be conveyed to be revealed. Rabbi Shimon is the uh, was the the Rav, the the, the master of the uh, of the ten who together wrote the Zohar in the cave. Again, if you were not Rabbi Shimon, I would not be conveying to be revealed. The zivug, the coupling, in that world bears fruit more than, than a zivug that is done in this world. 
with their zivug, the zivug of that world, with their passion as one, when the souls cling to one another, they bear fruit and lights come out of them and become candles. And these are the souls for the proselytes who convert. Changed heart. All those souls that are born out of these zivugim, couplings, enter the same hall. When one proselyte converts, a soul flies out of that palace and enters under the wings of divinity, and divinity kisses her because she's an offshoot of the souls of the righteous, and sends her into that proselyte, and she stays within him. From that time, he's called a proselyte of tzedek, of justice. That is, the meaning of what is written, the fruit of a righteous is a tree of life. Who is Zeranpin? Elicits souls. This is also the fruit of the righteous. He makes souls. Happy is he who lowers himself in this world. How high he is in that world. One who is small is great, and one who is great is small. The Creator increases only one who lowers himself and the Creator lowers only one who increases himself. Happy is he who lowers himself in this world, how great he is in the ascension in that world. There is no gar, meaning upper world or the upper sephirot, except through illumination of chokhmah on the left, and only by inclusion of the right together with the left, when chokhmah clothes in chasidim, and illuminate the gar. And all the reward and all the good in the future is only in the illumination of the gar, the upper. However, through the sins of the lower ones, the left overcomes the right and wishes to govern alone. Then a dispute is made between the right and the left, and the right line removes his chasidim from the left line. At that time, the left is quenched because Chochmah, wisdom, cannot illuminate without Chasidim, mercy. And the harsh denim, judgments in it, appear. Likewise, the right remains in Vak without Gar, for there is Gar only from the illumination of Chochmah in the left. Why the temple was ruined and Israel were exiled among the nations. This is why the temple was ruined and Israel were exiled among the nations. It was said about the verse, I the Lord, in its time I will hasten it. If they are rewarded, I will hasten it. If they are not rewarded, in its time. How can Israel be redeemed if they have not even been rewarded and are still rebellious? The thing is that the exile was because through their sins they caused the left to overcome the right and rule by itself. For then the right removes the Chassidim from it. Hence when Israel repent and cling to the Creator who is the middle line, the middle line returns and unites the right and the left, sustains lights of both of them, the Chachma clothes in Chasadim, and the Gar appear, meaning that Israel are redeemed and their illumination, and they receive all of their good reward. It was said, if they are rewarded, I will hasten it, and on that there is no set time. Rather, when they repent, they are redeemed. However, if they do not repent, there's a set time that brings redemption, even though they've not made repentance, which is once it is possible to gather all the harsh judgments that Israel suffered during the exile into a complete measure, in a way that they suffice, that Israel will fear and will never sin again, making the left prevail over the right, as they did in the time of the ruin. This is actually an explanation. At that time they're worthy of redemption, even without repentance. For even without repentance they're guaranteed, and 
let them not return to folly for the many harsh denim that they've suffered. It was said, if they are not rewarded in its time, which happens by itself along with the disclosure of the judgments in the exile for a sufficient amount. And there's no need at all for Israel's awakening for repentance. It is so because all of the exile and the harsh judgments in the exile come from the domination of the left without the right, the north side. Through the left, the gar appears, from which there are all reward and all the good that is destined to come to Israel. At that time of redemption, the Creator awoke Abraham, the right line, south, and even though they were not rewarded, they did not make repentance of clinging to the middle line. It was already time to redeem them without repentance. A conscious cue. Can I speak a little bit more about how I should connect to the others who are here? Should I try to feel them or focus my desire for everyone to connect to each other and the Creator? Uh, yeah, both. Both of those things. We, we need to, in any way that we can, be, become aware and maintain that the, the awareness that uh, it's not you know this talking head here speaking to you it's not just you listening but that every uh, the entire world the upper and the lower worlds exist within you this is speaking about your root and so likewise our hearts should think about and hold all of the pieces that we now think of as separated from us and it, this is a very special occasion, which this is what kind of makes it prayer in a sense, to read this together, is that we have an actual gathering. We have, our heart is here and is willing. It's willing to, to take all of this, the disowned parts of the heart, of the self, of the, of the single creature that we think of as other people and acknowledge that the only way to connect with them is the place that, that is beyond time and space, and that is the feeling in the heart. It reaches anywhere, past, future, beyond anything. It's, it has no, no physical limitations at all. We have, a, in this meeting, we know that there are many, many, many people doing the same thing at the same time, if that will satisfy our ability to, to feel that we are connected. Think about them, ask for them to be able to be connected, and see in the midst of that feeling that there is no you and them. It's all, it is really this desire for connection that bounds all of the lower world to the upper world, just as it was described to us in what we read. Uh, and it's always seeking us, and it's always seeking to unite us. So let's help. Let's devote our mind to our heart to seek that connection to, to be become aware not only that there are many with us but that we feel them and care that they are connected uh joanne is asking could you explain this time of redemption without repentance there is a a, a uh, the entire path is laid out and evolution, spiritual evolution which is the real e evolution the evolution of our awareness and our perception happens by means of in what the Zohar is calling these three lines but we are most aware of, of two forces, the left and the right uh, one being the, the feeling the desire for the connection and, and the good, and this, there is some kind of visceral sensation of this within us that we feel at times. Or it's actually a phase. It's like, it's not a, it's not a time, but it's a, it's a 
state. And there is its other state, which is, which is the left line, in which we lose complete connection from this and uh, we, re we gain help by the blows <laughs> that, that happen to us that's, that create uh, a desire for us to consciously connect. Th this, um, these two arms of, of nature's action on us, of the law of development, um, these are part of the, the whole system of nature that will either in, um, in its time, which means through many blows, suffering, um, and in our perception over a long period of time and what we call history and all of, all of its wars and all of its suffering, um, that's in its time, that force of development of evolution, spiritual evolution, will eventually take us to complete redemption, which is complete connection with the Creator. But that path is a terrible path for all of us, for the world as a whole, and it talks about um, another by righteousness means that if we desire and work towards embracing the law and how it works with us with these with these two uh, hands, in which we be, you know we are awakened and enlightened, and then we're pushed away, and, and and the suffering that we feel from the distance of it makes us want to to consciously re-engage with the unity or find a way to do it. This hastens time. This means that through our willingness to do that war internally, as I said at the beginning, and uh, get as close as we can to this upper law by the means that was given to us, which is the, the connection and the care of all of the so-called separated aspects of reality and other people. If we want to, to do that, that hastens the development and brings redemption, and the redemption can come in a split second. It's not in its time, uh, by uh, that horrible pressing grind. That's what he's speaking of here. Um, oh good, you, f you, you got that, that's great. Alright, let's, let me take a look at Facebook here. Uh, no, only my post on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Uh, Korach. I didn't choose this one. This one is just next, which means it was chosen for us. They are more desirable than gold. Yes, than much fine gold and sweeter than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. How sublime are the words of Torah. How precious they are. They're lovely above and they're lovely for all. It is so because they are the holy name, and anyone who exerts in Torah exerts in the holy name and is delivered from any harm. He's delivered in this world and delivered in the next world. Anyone who engages in Torah grips to the tree of life. And because he is gripped to the tree of life, he is gripped to everything. As it is written, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Anyone who engages in Torah has freedom from everything, freedom from death. This is because freedom, Bina, is upon him and grips him. Whatever your hand finds to do with your strength, that do. Means that a person should contain the left in the right and everything he does should be included only in the right. Whatever your hand finds is the left which is called hand, to do with your strength is right, as it is written, your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. And when a man is watchful to make all his actions towards the right side and to include the left in the right, the Creator is inside him in this world and will gather him to him in the next other world. One should not say, 
When I come into that world, I will beg for mercy of the king and will repent before him. Rather, it's written about that there is no deed or contemplation or knowledge or wisdom. Once a person departs from this world, if one wishes for the Holy King to shine for him in that world and give him a share in the next world, he should engage in including his deeds in the right in this world and that all his actions will be for the Creator. And if he does not redeem his nefesh, ruach, and neshama in the Torah before he goes to that world, he will reincarnate into this world as before, as it is written, he returns to the days of his youth receiving nefesh and ruach and neshama. This is the statute of the law, and this is the law that Moses set before the sons of Israel. These are holy words of Torah. They are superior. They are sweet. As it is written, they are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold, and sweeter than honey. One who engages in Torah it is as though he stands by Mount Sinai each day and receives the Torah. As it is written, This day you have become a people. Who sends forth springs in the streams, they give drink to all the animals of my fields. King David said these verses in the spirit of holiness, and they should be regarded. When the upper Chochmah beat in its engravings, when the upper Chub, Chachma and Bina, mated, although the upper Chachma is the most hidden of all that are hidden, since the Yud does not come out of Avir in the upper Chachma and Bina, Chub, which are upper Ava Ve'ima. It's an opening from which a river stretches out. It is filled with high gates, which is Bina, Yeshut, in whom the Yod comes out of the Avir and Chochma and Chosadim flow out of them. He compared this matter of Upper Avavaima and Yeshut to a fountain and to a water source that fills a great lake from which spring streams and rivers extend to the right and to the left. Similarly, Avaveima and Yeshut are for a thin one that is unknown. In the Zivug of Yesedot, of upper Avaveima, who are unknown, in whom the Yod does not come out of the Avir. Avir means air. That river stretches out, stretching out of Eden. Bina, who went out of Rosh, Erech Anpin at the time of Katnut, smallness, and returned to Rosh, the head of Erech Anpin at the time of Gatlut, of greatness. Through this exit and coming, it fills that deep stream, Yesh, Yeshut, like a great water, like a great water lake that is filled by a fountain, and the source, who are the upper Avaveima, from there, springs and streams extend to Zeranpan and Malchut and are filled by it with Chochmah and Hasidim, as it is written, who sends forth springs in streams. These are the high and holy rivers of Zeranpan, the pure persimmon, pure air the Chagat of Zeranpan receive, the pure persimmon from Upper Avaveima. It is written, they go among the mountains. Chagat de Zeranpin, who are called mountains, and from whom Malchut receives. Also Zeranpin and Malchut both drink from that stream of the upper holy stream that stretches out who is Yeshut. Once Zeranpin and Malchut have drank, they give drink to all of the animals of my fields. As it is written, and from there it parted and became four heads. These four heads are all the animals of my fields, which are all four animals, ox, eagle, lion, and man, which are Malchut's Merkava, Malchut's chariot.
They are the whole of the camps and hosts in Biya. Clara is saying, could we just for one moment feel where we are in the heart of the Creator? Peace should be touchable. Okay, let's take that moment. Let's just feel without words. Righteous, who are rewarded with being attached to the bundle of life. Yesod de Zeranpen are rewarded with seeing the glory of the High and Holy King, as it is written, to behold the pleasantness of the Lord and to visit in His palace. Their abode is higher than all the holy angels in all their degrees, since neither the upper nor the lower are rewarded with seeing that high place, as it is written, Neither has the eye seen a God beside you, which is the Upper Eden. Yeah, it should be touchable, and it is, isn't it? Uh, so let's see. Uh, to be conscious feels like home yep yeah and I think that all of those who uh, who come to know that who come to here who want the connection with the Creator are all homesick the good thing is we don't have to go anyplace else we just have to change our heart because this is our home uh, it's the thing that's most hidden from us that this is a you know this is a spiritual world if we will make it so uh, and it only happens through that upper law of bestowal through knowing the Creator by doing what what the Creator does and that's something starting in the heart you know with an intention f for that connection and the end result of that is is that we we make sure we're guided to do the things that, that sustain others and sustain the world and sustain that covenant, that connection, the awareness of the connection. Um, it's much more than that, of course. Once we grasp the need to aspire and to draw closer together, it corrects our attitudes. Uh, it stops us from flowing just by our nature, which is what is destroying and what's what is causing the external war. The inner war is tough, but it's absolutely winnable because we were built for that. The entire system is built for that. And it pushes us so that we will want to do what and receive what it wants to give us. So, thank you, friends. Uh, thank you so much really lovely to to be with you thank you for your connection which was tangible and let's meet again next tuesday uh to